Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So, viewer discretion is advised. So, so with all the customers! So your only customers were Mr. Kudo and the victim? How many times do you need to ask the same thing, Trite? You never catch me drinking the same blend twice. Huh? You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the restaurant. But you're wasting your time. You can't grind birdseed to make coffee, if you catch my drift. But there's a hole in this testimony somewhere. I'm sure of it. Yeah. When he got the word he won the lottery, Monsieur Elk became very excited. I won the lottery! <laughs> Did you see him? None. I was in the kitchen, but I heard him. Wow, that's really loud. I remember him shouting, YES! A FAMILIAN BOX! Presumably, the defendant heard that too then, correct? Okay. Maggie? She looked like a poor little frightened dove. And what about Mr. Kudo? That old man choked on some bird seeds that got stuck in his throat. Wow. He ate the birds. Yeah. Jaden, you ate bird food! <laughs> <laughs> no, the, um... What was I gonna say? He must have been really loud then. Oh yeah, well he must have been if really you loud. Okay, Marty, if you won half a million dollars, wouldn't you be? Like, yeah! I wouldn't do it in the middle of a restaurant though, because I'd be afraid I'd get beat up. Oh, that's true. Glenn Elk would... didn't have the common sense. No, I would well he's probably like... like, oh hey, only Victor Crudo, I could take this guy in a fight. That's true. <laughs> Even well... though I got beat up last night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hmm. It seems we now have yet another incident on our hands. It was approximately five minutes later since the poisoning happened. Okay. And what were you doing at that point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman, monsieur. Sorry, what do you mean? There is little renowned chef John Armstrong and the tragic poet Clarice Armstrong. C -c Clarice? Clarice? Wait, wait. Does this guy have like a male and a female name? Well, okay, when you play drag, usually you have, like, a job name where it's like, oh, I'm Megan, or whatever, oh, that's, like, I'm that's the drag true. queen, and then when you're having your normal life, you're like, no, I'm Greg. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> How many drag queens are named Greg? I don't know, I but... Don't... Oh, what if, like, outside the restaurant, he's just, like, a normal dude? Like, oh, hey, what's up? He could be. That's what a lot of people are. It's, then, that's just, like, the cafe shtick. Sure. No, it's like when you, um, uh, what is it? It's like when you're in a maid cafe or a butler cafe or whatever. There's like, a, a butler cafe? You never <laughs> No, I have yep. not. Is it, it called is. room service? <laughs> no, it should be. No, but it's, like, basically all these, like, hot guys that serve people okay like when stuff. i picture butlers i don't think of hot guys i think of they're like, also like the oh, john doe <laughs> <laughs> your your tea no there's like a mix i think your there's money like all sir. The, <laughs> there's all like the types of, but yeah <laughs> everyone's just like judge are, are you judging somebody for having different tastes <laughs> we i was writing the poem an angry tale of a chef and half a million dollars of debt well okay <laughs> Great! We don't even need to prove that. <laughs> um, I love how this is Pearl's theme that plays for the poetry. Cooking for a man who won half a million dollars in the lottery. It is called Pourquoi. It means why. Perhaps I could recite it for the court. Yes, yes. Please, please don't. don't. Please do. <laughs> oh no, I want to hear that. <laughs> there was no time for phony. No time for phony business. You mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked the old man to call from the payphone. I think that's the worst person to have call. Like, I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> By your own argument, Trite. The purpose of this phony victim's performance was so the old man would see it. In other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. Beyond, beyond it seems, the shadow of a doubt has been lifted, s'il vous plaît. I guess Mr. Armstrong is connected to this case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. Elg, and I refuse to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed, too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Ah! Oh, you mean that's when the phony staged his act? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in his testimony. 
What if Maggie didn't pass out, though? That's the thing. You couldn't have they, they uh, you couldn't have relied on, on that. You can't bank on that, though. She used to be a cop! <laughs> this is Maggie. Alright. So this one's a little trickier. Okay, so... Just after 2 p.m., there were no other customers. When he won the lottery, he became very excited. Yep. It's five minutes later that the poisoning occurred. There was no time. Well, that the... would be when the, um, that would be what we were present on, is the, that one. Um, and now from there, no time for the victim to do the acting. The time of death was between It was somewhere and... in this hour. Somewhere. We don't know. I mean, that would be a good option, actually, to do. Um... No. Gumshoes lunchbox! I really hope that the weird, um, slightly robotic lady has to go come to court. Lisa Basil. Yeah, Lisa Basil. I do, need to remember... Do, 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 do. She literally looks like a robot. A smidge. Like if That's she why was, Maya kept calling her a robot. Yeah, if she was in, um, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's really good graphics for the Genesis. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. She's the final boss. <laughs> that you, have you, have to you have to enter the secret code to get to Yeah, it. yeah. I think it's just that. I think it's the autopsy report. If it's really between those times... Nope. Aw. Oh. Sorry. Um. Doo-doo. Doo-doo. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom. I actually don't remember which statement to present on, but I know what to present. Okay, um, five minutes after. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe I... it's just under there were no other customers. Because we know there is another customer, we just don't know how to prove it. Right, so we can't really do that. That's the... Okay. Just after 2 p.m. Um... Okay, we kind of need to kickstart this. Okay, well, if I can't figure it out, then you help me. Okay, Which, so you do think it's on this last statement? I think it is. Um. But what would prove that? I don't know. I just feel like that would be the statement that it would be. Otherwise, it could be the statement before it. Five minutes later yeah. that the poisoning occurred? Yeah, because we were wondering if it was a staged act. So that the poisoning occurred, and then afterwards, they were like, we're gonna do the actual poisoning. Wait, they did the staged one first? Yeah, so that way Maggie would pass out, and then they could have everyone in. Because obviously he's in on it. True. You do, this, you do the staged one first, you get the man out to go call the police, and then they have a few minutes to do the poisoning. Like, the actual one. So that means the real Glenn Elk was in there. And so was the phony Glen Elg, and Glen Elg wasn't like, that's weird, why is that guy dressing <laughs> like me? <laughs> well, no. What, You're what, dressing again, like me Again, now. what I think happened, and this could explain him not touching anything. Actual Glen Elg is, like, tied up in the kitchen. Tied up in the kitchen. <laughs> a la Ratatouille style. <laughs> a la Ratatouille style. And, like, with his medicine, they stuff the medicine in the, and they're like, I don't know, put it in your ear. Puts it in his ear, he puts the headpiece on, he walks out, he's ready. Maggie comes in for work, and then he comes in later with everything set up, and it would be, yeah. This is getting to be almost as convoluted as the lot of hearts. That scenario. is not! Okay, this not is quite. way more plausible. It is. That. Oh yeah, for sure. That's just like, you were just like, spouting off everything. Yeah, I think it was the lot of heart in me that was like, eh, sure. Yeehaw! Shoot off a gun to shoot off my gun to shoot off the camera. And another guy who had a party popper Lord and Popper's a gun. And a gun. And then Von Karat also had a gun. <laughs> in the, in the there were, so that's that's costume. a total for those who weren't counting, that's a total of four guns oh, yeah. and five explosion sounds. Everybody brings their guns to camping. There's bears <laughs> in Japanifornia. In the winter? Yup. Bears. Alright, well, this is going nowhere. Yeah, so. just pick something. The million daughter dollar Daughter? The million daughter? <laughs> I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Goody boy, what do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning number of a oh, half a million dollar lottery ticket. Oh, I forgot ticket. about this. We, oui, that must be the show Molyak was listening to. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. 
I wonder. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? Oui, oui, I am sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time because I had just finished serving the lunch menu. Get to the point, Troy, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30 p.m. And it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1.30? Now, supposedly, the victim made some noise when it was announced that he had won. Yeah, this makes And yet, sense. I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point in time. No! This victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. Listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum, catching a show that was already over, there's only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. How long was Maggie unconscious for? What the heck? <laughs> they, they don't have a good clear concept of how consciousness works. <laughs> Nobody does. Yes, there were two Glen Elgs in Trabion that day. The real Glen Elg, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer, and the phony Glen Elg acting out the events for Mr. Kuro oh, to so witness. Oh, so he was poisoned beforehand. Yeah, it, it certainly seems that way. I mean, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Quite a performance, Trite. You were almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock-hard foundation of rhythm to build your psalm. What is this? Music Fury 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's just now after 2 p.m. The phony Elg is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain, then, where the real Glen Elg is? I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court. However, at that time, the real Glen Elg was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Thank you, Trite. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? Now I presume you can prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The, the missing corpse? According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer there. If that customer was the phony Glen Elg. Then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? They brought it out. Yarg! <laughs> they had to do an autopsy on him. That's So what they did was they did a body swap. They were but like, where did they swap the body to? No, what I'm saying is, you have the fake, uh, you've already killed Glen Elk. Yeah. Fake poisoning happens. Mr. Okay, Kudo but runs, while the fake Mr. poisoning Kudo is happening, where did the, where is the body? In the kitchen. And then, when everyone's out and everyone's unconscious, they go, doop -a doop you're there, here you're slumped over, then we okay. put you out. The prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court... You must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Y yes, your honor. No conjecture, Trite. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. E evidence w What's with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden? You can do it. I thought I had him with that contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. So you fight. Well, Mr. Wright, the court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. First, where was the body of the real Mr. L concealed? Outside Trabian? Inside Trabian? I would say inside in the kitchen. However, it could very well be that they kept him in the weird lady's place, the tender lender. <laughs> it could be. Okay. I think either one's possible. Clearly, there's no place to hide a body inside Trabian. Therefore, the killer must have hauled the body outside. Hmm, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Nope. Where's the evidence that proves the body was taken out of the restaurant? Um, I'm pretty sure she did it. <laughs> Too bad. I don't think you'll ever grasp the real heart of rock and roll. Uh, good what thing. are you talking about? I love uh, rock, rock and roll. roll. <laughs> the jukebox, baby. <laughs> that, yep, that's the lyrics. You must mean that your elephants is irrelevant, Mr. Wright, and you your don't enunciate well. Your elephants is irrelevant. Your elephants are irrelevant. Come on, Nick. You've got to think it through. 
feel the beat, and then hit it with some heavy metal. Okay, I need to calm down and get my facts straight. What should I do now? Inside. It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside. That's actually very true. Obvi if you think about the front door, oh, hey, neighbor, how you doing? Oh, hey! <laughs> Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside, Trabion. Hmm, interesting. But where could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Wright? Oh, yes. Yes, Your Honor. The exact location where the body was concealed inside Trabion is... And you said it was in the I kitchen. I would say the kitchen. The body was hidden here. Hmm, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? We don't have any evidence that proves anything about where the body's hidden. This is all... Do we not? I don't think so. Well... The no, real reason no, I want you say, so bad... I was about to say, that's too morbid. <laughs> um... <laughs> No. no, I had like, there Sweeney, was no I had, like Sweeney Todd flashbacks. There's no blood involved because he just got poisoned. Still, I had Sweeney Todd flashbacks. <laughs> um, he was stuffed in the back. <laughs> it's, oh. it's like Mary Poppins <laughs> carpet bag. Oh, <laughs> um, the victim's prescription bag. <laughs> it's huge. huge. <laughs> um, jeez, a small bottle. Do we have any evidence? We do. Is it- oh! Is it behind the- No, that would behind be- Behind blue eyes. That would be really hard to imagine, though. Okay, what? what if it's not hidden in the kitchen, and instead it's hidden right behind the entrance? You know how there's that weird, like, area that's kind of off from the public where there was, like, the newspapers and, like- Oh, you mean the like magazine that. rack? The magazine rack. There's no way they can hide a body behind there. The, the newspaper was sticking out. <laughs> yeah, maybe they hid it behind there and they were like, oh shoot, you could see part of his head. And then they put this over the newspaper. <laughs> How small do you think the victim is? He's not like... I know. It's not I, like I'm just trying, I'm literally trying to think of stuff. Uh, well, what about the magazine clipping? The sports paper? Yeah. The, this is just like, hey, Zinio who is impersonating okay. me. <laughs> okay. MC Bomber. Du, 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 du. Um. I like to imagine while this is happening, Phoenix is just like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe the crime photo would explain it? Maybe the previews will be. <laughs> crime photo doesn't show the kitchen, Marty. Oh. Well, I don't know. Is it just the small bottle? Oh. Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? No, 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 I've never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only use the very best bottles, monsieur. It's the highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, your honor, it was found in the kitchen of Trabion. Eh? What? But I only use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. <coughs> but this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? That Mr. Elg visited an autolaryngeal clinic and was given medication that day. Y you can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed, and I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle match the prescription that was given to Mr. Elg. <laughs> <laughs> he barfed a little there too, my bad. <laughs> he was that upset. That upset? <laughs> we have our episode title, Good Old Barfs. <laughs> Glen, Glen Elk's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen, at which time this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong, when the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? Well, do you? Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you were setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. No! Oh, order! Order! This is an extraordinary development. Witness, did you... Did you murder Mr. Glenn Elg? Never! I could not do such a horrible thing! No! 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 <laughs> 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 
Mr. Godot? The bitterness. Mm. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? <laughs> <laughs> then I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. At least it's empty. Listen up, chef. How about a brand new flavor in your ear? My <laughs> deficient friend, my H deficient friend. She will smart put on, please, you must hear me out! It is a trap, listen to me. Por favor. Yo hablo espanol, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. I'm only going to ask you once, did you do it? Non, no, 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 absolutely non. I simply, I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot, right, Gramps? Witness, the court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Godot's coffee mug awaits you, as does my gavel. Oh, we, it is clear. What do they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this. Very well. Begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. Yeah, this is definitely getting split into two episodes. Okay. I forgot he had, like, four more testimonies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the confession! Mm -hmm. It is true. I, I hid the body in my kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. Yep, we know. I had to go along with because th there was a reason I could not refuse. But I did not kill him, I swear it. You must believe me. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. What? <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> the Lemmings foreigners who watch this will know that. Oh. You were forced by who? I, I cannot say, or I will be e erased. Let's try a different question, then. When Mr. Elk died, was he really the only person at his table? There was. There was another man. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. Well, this is easy, because we already know <laughs> yep. that he's under oath from the dumb, like, contract. Dumb law. Oh, oh, no. Under the oath from the dumb con. Dumb law. The dumb law. I've gotta <laughs> tell the truth in court. It's so annoying. <laughs> no. So inconvenient. No, that's not what I meant. No, I mean he's under the dumbness of Xeniope, and he's like, yeah. you, What you gonna say? You gonna rat me out in court? What? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best and the worst impression of Xeniope I've ever heard. <laughs> Did you carry the body by yourself? We, oui, I carried him, and I carried Maggie, too. Wow, at the same time? Maggie, too? What a buff guy. When she saw the little victim collapse, she fainted. I mean, say what you will about this guy, he is ripped. Yeah. I could not leave her there. But why did you hide the bodies? A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. No! What man? Who was he? No, no, I cannot say. I fear for my life. He's really scared. This is like the, um, what was it? April, May, where she was just like, uh, yep. I'm going to die if I tell you everything. <laughs> you just have to put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, you're right. If he won't tell me, I'll tell him. But why would you go along with this man? Because of the obvious. I, I had to because I was, I was so in debt because I'm terrible with my money management skills. <sighs> Take econ. Make a budget. That too. <laughs> this is basically like the restaurant version of Entertainment 720 from Parks and Rec. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we we heard you had that. to spend money to make money. I don't know where we went wrong. We spent all our money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? You know, Monsieur. Yes. Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit old to get away with that. And a bit too male. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So I'll just have to prove it with evidence. Cool. I did not hit her. <laughs> mm. So, you are claiming that all you did was hide the bodies, is that correct? We. Oui. That's right! If we are to believe you, Mr. Armstrong, you must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. 
He's already confessed this much. He might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah, but he really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. Then sock it to him, Nick. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So actually, I want to check something. There might be two ways out of this. So if we present his loan contract here... That works too! Interesting! I thought that was the thing you'd use. What would you do otherwise? I'll show both off. Okay. You have a half a million dollar debt, don't you? H half a million dollars?! Is this true, Mr. Armstrong? We. Oui. C'est juste désolé. I was weak and I borrowed the money. This is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you couldn't refuse anything asked of you by this man. So... Yeah, that's obvious, but let's go back. Well, actually, first. <laughs> you couldn't refuse Godot's words! <laughs> I can tell today has worn you out. You have my permission to go home, Mr. Wright. Excuse me? We, oui, you are tired. The oil is a mild blend of myrtle and lavender. Don't worry, Trite. We've got this covered. Without the Covered?! Like, I'm gonna wait to you to finish! <laughs> Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that Mr. Armstrong had this one fatal weakness. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So what you're- what I always did was A man present... and you just presented him? Yep. What?! I would never do that. Let's end this dance of Reen Around the Rosie, Mr. Armstrong. This is the man that you've been referring to. Ah! Who is that? I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Oh, I don't know! Maybe a month ago in this very courtroom? This man is Furio Tiger. He's the manager of a loan office called Tender Lender. There's no point trying to hide the truth anymore, Mr. Armstrong. I know you couldn't go against Mr. Tiger. At least not while he had this on you. Okay, and then, then you do the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> what about Maya? A half a million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you. We, oui. it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong. La Tiger, he told me he was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand that that repay his loan. I don't even know what I'm saying. I, I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried La Party and La Inconscient Maggie out of La Dining Area. And into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say... ...that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tiger. <laughs> who does that? Who sticks out their tongue while talking? To anime. Hey. Oh, yeah. Some anime. At hmm. Least. I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison and the lottery ticket were recovered from the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? No, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it. I was. I was not. It is despicable. Mr. Godot. Yo. You will summon this Furio Tiger as a witness. I doubt that he can be arranged today, so we'll adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Thirty minutes. What? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I hate free cases. <laughs> cases yeah. Free day cases. I need a half hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. H How the? Don't sit back and relax yet, trite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. You summoned him as a witness, so mm -hmm. that's your fault. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's saying so testimony that benefits me? Of course it's completely truthful. Oh, he's saying testimony that benefits you? Clearly he can't be trusted. Yeah. Very well, your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We will resume once Mr. Tiger is ready to take the stand. Until then, Roar. court is adjourned for a 30-minute recess. I need to get my lunch. So do I. I'm hungry. So am I. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is definitely going to be a two-parter episode because it's, I think, a, a, at least an hour in recording Probably. now. Probably. Look forward to next time. We're getting Zinniope on the stand. And... Zinniope? In the dude? house? <laughs> Yo's dude? Who? I'm going to beat you so hard. You know, my ancestors is dizzy. <laughs> Wait, that's, that's, that's Yao from Mulan. <laughs> I was like, isn't that from Mulan? That is from Mulan. <laughs>
But oh, this is gonna be great. Look forward to that. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless. Thank you.